Let's begin with what isoflurane is. Isoflurane is a halogenated ether volatile anesthetic used for the maintenance of general anesthesia. This is the chemical formula of isoflurane. It contains carbon, hydrogen, chlorine, fluorine, and oxygen atoms. What are the physical properties of isoflurane? Isoflurane is a colorless liquid at room temperature and is stored in brown glass bottles to protect it from light. It has a pungent, ethereal odor, which can irritate the airway, making it less ideal for inhalational induction. The boiling point of isoflurane is around 48.5 degrees Celsius which facilitates its vaporization for use in anesthesia. At 20 degrees Celsius, isoflurane has a vapor pressure of 238 millimeters of mercury, allowing it to be effectively vaporized and administered through a vaporizer. Isoflurane has a moderate blood gas partition coefficient of 1.4, providing a balanced speed of induction and recovery. It is heavier than air, with a density of approximately 1.46 gram per milliliter. Isoflurane is non-flammable and non-explosive, making it safer for use in the operating room. As a chemical isomer, isoflurane shares the same molecular weight as enflurane. How is isoflurane identified and coded in clinical settings? According to the International Organization for Standardization, isoflurane is identified by a purple color code in clinical settings. This color code is applied to vaporizer caps and bottles containing the anesthetic agent. The color codes for other inhalational agents is given in this table. What is the mechanism of action of isoflurane? Isoflurane like any other volatile anesthetics exerts its effects by interacting with various receptors and pathways in the brain and spinal cord. It primarily enhances inhibitory GABA and glycine receptor activity and inhibits excitatory NMDA receptors, ultimately leading to reduced neuronal excitability and muscle relaxation. Why are volatile anesthetics like isoflurane delivered through vaporizer? The reason for this is due to the saturated vapor pressure. Saturated vapor pressure is the maximum pressure exerted by a vapor when it is in equilibrium with its liquid phase at a given temperature. At SVP, the rate of evaporation equals the rate of condensation. So at SVP, there is no net change in vapor amount and the system is saturated. Isoflurane has a high saturated vapor pressure, meaning it evaporates easily into a potent, concentrated gas than, say, water. Without a vaporizer, isoflurane's high SVP would lead to too much anesthetic gas in the breathing circuit, risking overdose. Vaporizer is required to dilute the strong vapor to a safe, precise concentration by mixing with fresh gas flow from breathing circuit. Describe key features of isoflurane vaporizer. An isoflurane vaporizer is placed outside the breathing circuit, out of circuit, meaning the patient's breathing does not directly draw vapor from it, preventing pressure fluctuations during exhalation. It uses a variable bypass system, where a small portion of fresh gas flows through the vaporizing chamber becoming saturated with isoflurane vapor, while the rest bypasses it. The wicks and baffles inside the chamber increase the surface area so that the fresh gas picks up more isoflurane vapor. The two streams then mix to achieve the precise dialed concentration. Additionally, it features automatic temperature compensation to maintain consistent vapor output despite cooling effects from evaporation using a bimetallic strip or electronic sensors to adjust gas flow. The bimetallic strip bends in response to temperature changes regulating the size of the bypass path. For a more detailed explanation, watch the video on vaporizer design. Briefly describe the pharmacokinetics of isoflurane. 
All inhalational anesthetics follow similar pharmacokinetics principles as discussed in General Pharmacokinetics of Inhalational Anesthetics video. It includes uptake, distribution, metabolism, and elimination. Isoflurane is inhaled through a vaporizer mixed with carrier gases, with rapid alveolar transfer into the blood due to its low blood solubility. Upon entering circulation, isoflurane quickly distributes to highly perfused organs like the brain and heart before gradually reaching muscles and slowly saturating adipose tissue due to its high lipid solubility. The anesthetic undergoes minimal hepatic metabolism primarily via CYP2E1, producing negligible amounts of trifluoroacetic acid. Over 95% of isoflurane is eliminated unchanged through exhalation. What property of isoflurane makes it have a rapid onset and offset of action? The speed at which an inhaled anesthetic works depends largely on its blood solubility, measured by the blood gas partition coefficient. The blood gas partition coefficient is defined as the ratio of the concentration of the anesthetic in blood to the concentration in the gas phase when the two phases are in equilibrium at a given temperature. Isoflurane has a low blood gas coefficient of 1.4 meaning it does not dissolve easily in blood and stays in the gas phase. Because it stays mostly in the gas phase, it quickly moves from the lungs into the bloodstream and then to the brain, allowing fast induction. Had it been more soluble in blood, the anesthetics would be bound to the blood with less of it available to act on the brain. Similarly, when administration stops, it rapidly leaves the blood and is exhaled, leading to fast recovery. The table given here compares the induction speed of different agents based on their blood gas partition coefficient. How does ventilation affect isoflurane's uptake? When minute ventilation increases, a greater volume of anesthetic gas reaches the alveoli each minute, rapidly elevating the alveolar partial pressure of isoflurane. This creates a steeper diffusion gradient across the respiratory membrane allowing faster transfer of anesthetic molecules into pulmonary capillary blood and subsequently arterial blood. As the arterial partial pressure rises more quickly, the anesthetic reaches effective concentrations in the central nervous system sooner, significantly accelerating the induction process. With hypoventilation, we would see the opposite effect. How does cardiac output affect isoflurane induction? The effect of cardiac output on induction is more pronounced with more soluble anesthetic agents, as their uptake is greater. In high output states, increased pulmonary blood flow physically clears anesthetic molecules from alveoli faster than they can be replenished by ventilation. This slows the rate at which the alveolar partial pressure rises. The alveolar partial pressure is the driving force for the diffusion of anesthetic molecules into the blood and ultimately the brain. So, increased cardiac output slows down the induction speed. Conversely, a lower cardiac output means less blood flow, allowing the anesthetic to build up in the alveoli. This leads to a faster rise in alveolar partial pressure and a quicker onset of anesthesia. However, if the cardiac output is too low, then the induction can be slowed as there won't be blood flow to the brain itself. The brain blood partition coefficient describes the relative solubility of a gas or any substance in brain tissue versus blood. For isoflurane, it is approximately 1.6, meaning that at equilibrium, the concentration of isoflurane in the brain is 1.6 times higher than in the blood. This allows isoflurane to rapidly distribute into the highly perfused brain tissue, leading to a relatively quick onset of anesthesia. However, because the solubility is not extremely high, isoflurane also clears from the brain at a reasonable rate, contributing to a manageable recovery time. This makes isoflurane efficient than older, highly soluble agents like halothane, but not as rapid as less soluble modern agents like desflurane. 
The fat-to-blood partition coefficient for volatile anesthetics reflects the anesthetic solubility in fat tissue relative to blood. Higher coefficients mean greater solubility in fat. This primarily influences anesthetic distribution into fat and duration of action. The fat blood partition coefficient of isoflurane is much higher at 45, indicating that the drug has a strong tendency to accumulate in adipose tissue. However, because fat has low blood perfusion, the uptake of isoflurane into fat occurs slowly over time. This means that during short procedures, fat storage has little impact, but in prolonged surgeries, significant amounts of isoflurane gradually build up in fat. Once anesthesia is discontinued, this stored isoflurane slowly diffuses back into the bloodstream, prolonging elimination and delaying full recovery particularly in patients with high body fat. Also note that, the anesthetic solubility in fat determines anesthetic's potency which is measured by MAC. Agents with higher fat solubility are more potent and have lower MAC. Why is isoflurane less likely to cause hepatotoxicity than halothane? Isoflurane undergoes minimal metabolism, with approximately 0.2% of the administered dose being metabolized in the liver. The primary enzyme responsible for its metabolism is cytochrome P450, which facilitates the oxidative breakdown of isoflurane. This oxidation leads to the formation of trifluoroacetic acid as the main metabolite. Unlike halothane, isoflurane does not significantly produce trifluoroacetyl chloride, a reactive intermediate associated with immune-mediated liver injury. During oxidation, a small amount of fluoride ions is released, but due to the low metabolic rate of isoflurane, these fluoride levels remain well below nephrotoxic concentrations. Also isoflurane is much more chemically stable than sevoflurane. So, while sevoflurane is more prone to forming compound A due to its structure, isoflurane does not easily break down into such reactive intermediates. What are the effects of inhalational anesthetics on physiological systems? The inhalational anesthetics demonstrate varying effects across physiological systems. Cardiovascularly, they significantly decrease blood pressure through vasodilation and myocardial depression, while nitrous oxide maintains stable pressures. Heart rate responses differ, with isoflurane and desflurane increasing rate via baroreceptor reflexes, halothane decreasing it through vagal stimulation, and sevoflurane showing minimal change. Respiratory effects include dose-dependent tidal volume reduction and compensatory respiratory rate increases, most pronounced with halothane, along with elevated arterial carbon dioxide levels particularly with desflurane. Cerebral impacts involve increased blood flow and intracranial pressure across all agents. With isoflurane, desflurane and sevoflurane providing the greatest reduction in cerebral metabolic rate. Neuromuscularly, these agents potentiate non-depolarizing blockers, most strongly with isoflurane and desflurane. Renal parameters like blood flow and filtration rate decrease under all anesthetics. Hepatically, halothane causes the most significant blood flow reduction and carries the highest hepatitis risk due to its substantial metabolism, compared to minimal metabolism. However, Clinically their effects can change in magnitude depending on the dose used and the use of concurrent intravenous anesthetics. A 60-year-old patient with ischemic heart disease is anesthetized with isoflurane. The MAP decreases from 85 to 60 mm of mercury. A. Explain why isoflurane causes less myocardial depression than halothane. B. Describe the coronary steel phenomenon and its relevance. Isoflurane causes less myocardial depression than halothane because it primarily reduces blood pressure through vasodilation rather than direct heart muscle suppression. While both anesthetics affect heart function, isoflurane has weaker effects on key contraction mechanisms. 
It minimally interferes with calcium channels and sarcoplasmic reticulum function that are essential for heart muscle contraction. In contrast, halothane strongly blocks these calcium pathways, leading to more significant impairment of heart pumping ability. This makes isoflurane's blood pressure effects easier to manage clinically, as they stem mainly from blood vessel dilation rather than from depressed heart function like halothane. The difference in calcium handling explains why isoflurane is generally safer for patients with heart conditions. Another reason is that halothane sensitizes heart to catecholamines increasing the risk of cardiac arrhythmia. Coronary steel occurs when vasodilation diverts blood flow away from narrowed or stenotic coronary arteries, worsening ischemia in affected areas. This happens because healthy blood vessels dilate in response to vasodilators, reducing perfusion to regions supplied by already maximally dilated stenotic arteries. Isoflurane is a vasodilating anesthetic that could theoretically cause coronary steal. However, it poses a lower risk than halothane because it better maintains coronary perfusion pressure. Unlike halothane, which depresses cardiac function and lowers blood pressure, isoflurane provides balanced vasodilation while preserving diastolic pressure essential for coronary flow. During maintenance with 1.2% isoflurane, a patient's PaCO2 rises to 50 mm of mercury. A. Why does PaCO2 rise? B. Why is sevoflurane preferred for induction in children compared to isoflurane? The rising PaCO2 is the result of respiratory depression that occurs with isoflurane like any other volatile anesthetics. Isoflurane reduces the sensitivity of the central chemoreceptors in the medulla to elevated levels of CO2 or hydrogen ions in CSF to be more specific. Normally, these chemoreceptors stimulate increased ventilation in response to rising PaCO2, but under isoflurane anesthesia this response is blunted, leading to inadequate compensatory hyperventilation. Volatile anesthetics also blunts peripheral chemoreceptors located in the carotid body. Sevoflurane is preferred for induction as it causes less airway irritation than isoflurane or desflurane due to its mild odor. Slower airway absorption and minimal reflex activation. Its low pungency avoids trigeminal nerve stimulation, preventing coughing or laryngospasm. With a higher blood gas solubility, it dissolves gradually, which rapidly irritates airways. Sevoflurane also minimally stimulates airway nociceptors, reducing bronchoconstriction risk. This makes it ideal for inhalation induction, especially in children and asthmatics. A neuroanesthetist selects isoflurane for a clipping of cerebral aneurysm. Justify this choice despite its effects on CBF. Isoflurane produces reduction in cerebral metabolic rate by up to 50% and provides significant neuroprotection that outweighs its cerebral vasodilatory effects. While isoflurane does increase cerebral blood flow, this effect can be effectively counterbalanced through controlled hyperventilation to maintain PaCO2 between 30 to 35 mm of mercury, which preserves cerebral vasoconstriction and prevents dangerous rises in intracranial pressure. Furthermore, at higher concentrations, isoflurane induces EEG burst suppression, creating an additional layer of neuroprotection during critical periods such as temporary vessel occlusion by dramatically reducing neuronal metabolic demand. These unique properties combined with its predictable hemodynamic effects and ability to rapidly titrate anesthetic depth make isoflurane a good choice in neuroanesthesia.